Hi, welcome back. So now that we've worked with the staging area a little bit and we've looked at adding and removing files, why don't we go ahead and start working on making our first commit. So we're going to make one commit in this video and one commit only because I want you to get a feel for how the whole process works. So we're not going to go and do five commits, add a file, then commit. We're just going to do one commit so you can see how the process works. So when I'm in my path right now, if I go ahead and check the git status, you can see that I have all of my files, I'm already tracking everything, and I'm actually going to add this to the tracking. So I'm going to go git add dot, and that's going to add all of the currently untracked files. But now what I want to do is make a commit because we don't actually have any commits yet. So before we move forward, just a quick note on what a commit is. Now, I know we've already explained this, but just for a little bit of revision, a commit allows you to just take a snapshot of all the changes and modifications you've done at the time and store them in a tree. So there you go. That's what a commit is. Now we're going to start actually making our first commit. So I'm going to go ahead and check my status, make sure I have everything. You can see we created three new files. So let's go ahead and make our first commit. So one thing I'd like to say is the different types or flags on the commit uh, on the commit command. So the command for actually creating or creating a commit is git commit. That's it. But there's a few things we need to do before that. And there's a few things we need to do after it. So if I just type git commit, it says here, please tell me who you are. So you actually need to configure your name and your email before you start working. So you can see it says fatal uh, empty identity name for my user dot local domain not allowed because you need to log in. So we're just going to follow the commands they gave us git config dash dash global because what global does it allows you to log into uh, all of across all of your uh, terminals so you can just use it in any repository. And so now we're going to enter my email. So I'm going to enter my email. And in fact, let me just go ahead and make this full screen so you can see everything. There we go. Now I'm going to configure my username. One. Config dash dash global user dot name. And I'm going to put my name there. There we go. Now I can start making my commits. So before I do that, I'm going to actually do dash dash help so I can see some of the different things I can do with commit. So you can see it brings up this huge menu that allows us to sort of interact with this because it brings up a Git manual, uh, like sort of like a GUI in the terminal that we can use to go and go through and see uh, how it's working. So let's get started. So first thing you can see here is synopsis, git commit, and then there's a bunch of different flags. The most common flags you're going to use is dash A and dash M for the message. So those are the two most common. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you want to, uh, just do git commit dash dash help and you're and you can go through and just look at everything so you can know how commit works. But I wouldn't recommend using this manual. I'd recommend going onto Google maybe and searching how to, you know, all the different flags for git commit because it's a lot more user friendly. You can just see everything easier. So let's read some of this stuff. So the description stores the current contents of the index index in a new commit. And basically what they mean by the index is the current staging area. So everything at that current point in time in a new commit, along with a log message from the user describing the changes. So this is one of the most useful features of commits. You can actually include a message, uh, just a little summary of what happened in that index or in that point in time, for example, added new script files or removed this and that function all of that. So you can do that with the log message. So there's a few other things here. Uh, we've already done git add, git remove. We've, used, we've done everything here, so we don't really need to go through it. So I'm just going to press Q to quit and we're back here. So now let's actually go and make our first commit. So we're going to add all of these new files. git commit dash m, the message flag, and then in quotations, you're going to put your message. So I'm going to say added new files. But usually for your first commit, what you would say is initial commit. Just like that. Now this is the standard first commit 
message that you would put. And once we get into GitHub, if we set up a template repository, you can see that there's already one commit saying initial commit. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that later, but we're going to go ahead and do this. You can, it, it doesn't really matter what you put in there. You can put anything you want, but just to follow convention, we're going to put initial commit. And there you go. Now it gives us this little message saying master, which is the branch. We'll talk about branches in the next section, root commit, and then the ID of the commit. We'll talk about that when we talk about checkout. Then you have the message and then it talks about all the changes. So three files changed, one insertion. So create mode uh, 10644. So this just means you created a new file. We created a new file, created a new file, created a new file. There we go. So that's pretty much it for committing files. It's actually quite easy. There is one thing I would say though, if you want to commit all of your tracking or commit all of your tracked files, because git commit dash M, if you don't include a certain flag, it'll take all of the files, tracked files, non-tracked files, and put them all in the commit. So if you want to commit untracked files, you just do git commit and you add the dash A flag, and then you add your message flag, just like that. So that allows you to add all of your tracked files. So there you go. That's just one thing to keep in mind uh, for the future when you start committing things. Uh, it's, it's quite a useful tool. Okay, there we go. So we learned about commits and, you know, making commits, but it's not really useful unless you you can see your previous history and your commits and everything, because otherwise you're just creating snapshots for no reason. So how do we actually look at all of our commits? It's actually quite simple. All you have to do is type git log. And what this is going to do is bring up a list of all of your commits. So you can see here you have commit and then the ID, which is um, it's quite a long string. Then you have the author. So this is what I'm talking about, contributors and uh, all of that. So then you have the date, Friday, September 7th, and then the time, everything like that. So as you add more and more commits, they'll show up on the log here. With something like source tree, you could easily go through and view all of them very quickly. But if you're using it from the terminal, this is how you're going to view your commits. It also says the branch here and it says the head. We'll talk about the head system in just a couple of videos. It's basically a pointer referring to where the current state and time is. So we'll talk about that in a few videos, but this is your commit, right? So in the next video, we're actually going to go through and use something called git checkout, which is going to allow us to go back in time and view our previous uh, commits so that we can actually look at previous code, things like that. We'll also use a few more features, uh, things like that. So we're just going to end it off at this video. We learned how to commit. And if you want to check your log, you just do git log. Make sure you include the dash A flag if you want to include all of the tracked files and the dash M flag to include a message. So that's pretty much it for git commits. Like I said, in the next few videos, we'll be working with our commits that we made. I'm going to add a few more commits off camera, and I challenge you to do that too. And don't just work with adding and deleting files. You want to go into these files and make changes to them. Just experiment around with how you can work with commits. So go ahead, do that, and then when you're done, maybe add three, four, five commits and come back to the next video so we can start working with these commits. All right, let's move on.